Supernatural. What, do you, what does that mean, supernatural? You, you know what natural means, right? Like nature, right? So supernatural means something that something that should never happen. Supernatural is something that should never happen. Something that's basically impossible to do. Exactly. Something that's basically impossible. That is what... Okay, Roman. Roman. Leave Dominic alone. Leave Dominic alone. He's trying to pay, he's trying to pay attention to the class. Something that should never, ever happen. Like, for example, a woman, 90 years old, has a baby. Now, 90 years old has a baby. That should never happen. In fact, in her case, it was impossible because something happened that when women get to be a certain age, they can no longer have children. And Sarah had already gone past that age. She was well past that age that she could no longer have children. And yet God blessed her with a baby boy. It was impossible, but it happened. That was a miracle. Yes? Was the baby boy Jesus? No. Nope. His name was Isaac. Isaac was his name. Now, how about another one? A guy was cutting wood with an axe. And the way they did, the, they didn't really attach the axe head to the wood. You know, you got the wooden handle and you got the metal axe. And as he was chopping wood, the axe head flew off and landed into water and sunk to the bottom. Does metal sink or float? It sinks. Okay, who says sinks? Who says it floats? In this case, it was both. Because when the metal, when the metal axe had fell into the water, it sunk to the bottom. Too deep for them to get it. And he cried out, the man who, who had the axe, he cried out, he said, Oh, Elisha, help me! Because the axe was borrowed, it wasn't even his. He had borrowed it from somebody. And now he lost the axe head in the water. And Elisha said, show me where it fell in. So he showed him where it fell in. Not anymore. In fact, Xander, that's also your chair. And Elisha said to the man, show me where it fell in. And the man showed him. Elisha cut a stick down from a tree and threw it into the water where the axe had fell in. And all of a sudden the axe had floated to the top. That's not supposed to happen. That's impossible. Axe heads don't float. This one did. That was a miracle. After Elisha died, and some guys were, they were burying a man. And all of a sudden, some enemies came along. And they, they're, oh no, we need to hide. We got this body with us. What are we going to do? They found the nearest uh, grave, and they just threw the body into the grave. Well, that happened to be Elisha's grave. And when the man's body landed on what was left of Elisha's body, all of a sudden, the man came back to life. That is not supposed to happen. That's impossible. That's impossible. It is. It actually happened. Way back. It happened about oh about three thousand, a little more than three thousand years ago. We'll get there. I'm not I'm not up to Jesus quite yet. We're gonna get there. Let's talk. But Will's got a good point. Jesus did a lot of miracles. And that's, that's our lesson here is Jesus' early miracles. Now, those of you who have your Bibles, 
Mark chapter 1 tells about it. But I want to tell you, before, while you're turning there, I want to tell you about something that is recorded in the Bible, but it's not in Mark 1. And it was an early miracle of Jesus. And I'm going to take Xander's water here. Mark 1 verse Let me find the verse for you here. Mark chapter 1. And it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be going to be verse 23. Mark chapter 1 verse 23. Now I'm what do I got in my hand here, Xander? What do I got in my hand here, Xander? What is it? What up? What is what up? What up? In New Jersey, they call it wood up. What? That's what they call it. They call it. They call it wood up. Wood up. Now Jesus was at a wedding feast when people got married back then. After the marriage, they throw a feast. They throw a party. Guess what? They still do that today. And people would bring out the wine, and they would drink. And some people would get a little too much to drink. Does that happen today, Kaya? It sure does. But in this case, they ran out of wine. They ran out of wine. Now, Jesus' mom was at the party with Jesus. And his mom came to him. Do you remember what Jesus' mom's name was? Mary. Mary, absolutely. You're correct. And Mary came to Jesus and said, they don't have any wine. You know what Jesus said? You know what Jesus said? What am I supposed to do about it? He knew what his mother was expecting. In fact, she didn't argue with him either. He said, what am I supposed to do? My time hasn't come yet. She didn't even bother to answer him. She told the men, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. Jesus told them, go get these big pots that they used to draw water with. He said, go get some and go get these pots and put water in it. So they did. And they brought it back to Jesus. And Jesus said, now, take it to the governor of the feast. These guys are kind of, okay. I'm going to take water to the, they're, they're wanting wine, and I'm going to take water to the governor of the feast. But he did it. They did it. Just like, just like uh, Jesus' mom told them. He said, she said, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. They did it. So they took the pots and they put it in front of the governor of the feast. And he put a little cup in to taste the water, to taste the drink. He tasted it. And he called the bridegroom. You know what a bridegroom is? When a man and a woman get married, oh. Oh, the woman God. is the bride and the man is the bridegroom. Oh. When Miss Faith and I got married, I was the bridegroom. No, no. This is not the time for that. He called the bridegroom over and he said, Normally, at a wedding feast, they'll put the good wine out first, and then when the people have had something to drink, then they start bringing out the worst wine and the worst wine. He said, but you kept the best wine until now. The water was turned into wine. That was a miracle. That shouldn't happen. Water doesn't just turn into wine, does it? No. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Or grape juice. Or... It just doesn't have grain up. Sit on your bottom, please. Sit on your bottom, please. But reading here in Mark chapter 1, 
in verse 23 it says, Now Jesus was in the uh, he was in the uh, uh, in the synagogue. The synagogue was their version of the church. And Jesus had been teaching. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone! What do we have to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. This man had a demon in him. He had a demon in him. And the demons knew who Jesus was. And they cried out and they made a scene. Jesus didn't want that to happen. And Jesus rebuked him. And he said, be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. That doesn't happen. Jesus forced this unclean spirit to come out of the man just by the word. And he had to obey. And when they, they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves, saying, what is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. Now, as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew. Who, who were Simon and Andrew? What was that? Yes, two of Jesus' disciples. Simon had a name that we know him better by. Anybody want to guess? Simon had another name. Jesus, when Jesus met Simon, he gave him another name. And we know him better by that other name. I don't want to think of David, no. No? No? Mark? Joseph? No? All good guesses? No. What'd you guess? Let me give you a clue. It's your grandfather's name. Bill? Father, his grandfather. Oh, Peter? No, my grandfather. Is that your grandpa's name? Peter. That's his name. That was his name. <laughs> Jesus gave Simon another name. Reina. It's not your problem. Hands to yourself, please. Yes. Just for the record, now let's go to screws. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what it is. I can't see it. I can't see it. I need to take a... Yeah, sometimes it happens. I'll, we can put it back in. Go sit down, please. Go sit down, please. Go sit down, go sit down please. So, so Jesus gave him a new, another name named Peter. Peter and Andrew were brothers. And Jesus entered into their house, and, but, uh, let's see, as soon as they, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John, but Simon's mother lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Anybody ever been sick? Yeah. 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 Have a fever? Have a fever?
Peter's mother-in-law had a fever. She was laying in bed with a fever. And they told Jesus about it. And he went in. And he reached out his hand. And all of a sudden, her fever left her. She got well. Now those are two, two miracles that Jesus had done. Jesus healed. He healed the sick and he cast out demons. Now, when stuff like that happens, word gets around. We've got an advantage. We got television. We got radio. We got internet. We got Facebook. We got Instagram. We got TikTok. We got TikTok. We got YouTube. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. Listen, 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 listen. Right now. Miss Faith is recording what's going on here. We're making a YouTube video. Yes, you guys are making a YouTube video. We are making a YouTube video. Guess what? You guys have been on YouTube. Every day. Every, almost every class, you guys have been on YouTube. Oh, So, what happens? Listen, listen up, listen up. Listen up. What happens is that somebody clear across the nation, maybe on the other side of the world, if they have permission, they can open it up and they can watch our class. That is pretty cool. They didn't have that in Jesus' day. You know what they had? Eric? Spun church kids. If, guess what? Eric, guess what they had back then? Just ears and notes. Huh? Not even that, because that was goal. rare. If you, were, if you had a scroll, you were very lucky. This is what they had. This is what they had. Guess what? Just like today. Just like today. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, did you hear? So news went out. What Jesus had done. News went out. People were getting healed. People, uh, demons were being cast out of people. And the news went out. The word got around the town. And all of a sudden, people from the town started coming to Simon Peter's house. They all wanted Jesus to come heal me. Heal me, please. Heal me. Heal me in my sickness. Lessons up here, not back there. Guys, enough. Healing is a wonderful thing. I love it when I see people get healed. And healing happens today. Sit up, please. I know. Sit up, please. I'm tired too. Sit up, please. Healing happens. Even today, healing happens. We've seen it in our church. We've got some kids here. Their mom had actually died. Her heart stopped beating. God healed her. God said, I am the God who heals you. God is a miracle working God. Jesus did many early miracles. He did many miracles later. We're going to touch on some of those in the next few weeks. Here's the thing. God loves you. And it doesn't matter what has to be done. God loves you. And if it takes a miracle, God will do a miracle for you. All you have to do is ask and believe. Ask and believe. That's it. What do you have to do? Ask and believe. 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 That's right. And God will do a miracle for you. Yeah. Yes, He will. Right now. I like your mommy. Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, I thought you had your hand up. I did. Well, I was calling on you. We'll get we'll get into more miracles though as the lessons go on in the next few weeks. Don't get ahead, don't get ahead of me. Don't get ahead of me. If God needs to do a miracle for you, He will, because the laws of the universe don't apply to God. Let me give you a sweet preview. Jaden. Leave your brother alone, please. Leave, leave your brother alone. Let me give you a sneak preview. You ever walk across a pool? No. Yes. Filled with water? Yeah. Not an empty pool. Walk across the top. I've walked into a huge Walk across the top of a pool with water in it. Oh, supernatural. That is impossible. It is impossible. Not very long. Not very long. Pretty soon, pretty soon you're going to sink. Everybody who's ever tried it sinks. Even with floaters. Because you're going to sink as far as your floaters, but you're still going to sink. But what if you like ate a balloon? Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Jesus walked on water. And guess what? Not just Jesus. He said to Peter, he said, hey, Peter. Because Peter, Peter said to Jesus, if that's really you, why don't you call me, invite me to get out of the boat and walk to you. And, Peter, and Jesus said, come on. Come on. So guess what? Peter got out of the boat. And Peter began to walk to Jesus on the water. That wasn't Jesus, was it? No. It was Peter. It was Peter. God can do miracles. He still does miracles today. I've seen people healed. People have been raised from the dead. God does miracles today. And He can do them for you. Alright, we're going to close here. Let me ask you a question. Well, Miss Faith is getting ready. Let me ask you a question. What is a miracle? Something that gratefully happens. Come on, I think I hear more. I think I hear more. Supernatural, which means what? It's impossible. It's impossible. God does the impossible. God does the impossible. 